Right, welcome back. You're watching Morning Live and uh, we've had some interesting stories for you today. And as we wrap Youth Month, the, we continue to speak to young people who continue to make a positive impact on the country. Now, Professor Tabum Sibi of uh, KwaZulu-Natal is the youngest dean in South Africa, just 34 years old. Msibi is currently the dean and head of school of education at uh, UKZN. He says uh, that young people in South Africa have a lot of opportunities opportunities available to them and just need to know how to access these opportunities. Professor Msibi uh, joins us now from our studios in Durban. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Welcome to you. And, um, you know, when I said professor, I was expecting gray hair and uh, an old suit, but this is not the image that we see. So you've re genuinely gone fast track to become uh, the youngest dean in the country. And that's a far cry from, uh, was it in Tambamklope, where you uh, started this journey of yours um, <laughs> to Columbia University in the States and Cambridge University as well. Tell us about this journey. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, I, I was fortunate uh, in my life uh, that I was able to uh, get uh, the necessary support that enabled my uh, accomplishments. I was born in Escort uh, and I was uh, brought up by uh, parents that really believed in education and I went to two schools that were really, really good. Um, one school in a township uh, by the name of Zola Primary School and another Escort High School that uh, really laid the foundation for um, the pursuit of excellence and uh, sort of being excited about uh, education. But I think what um, really enabled me was arriving at the University of Kosovo Natal that I got to a university that was, con that was really, really um, uh, committed to um, transformation. I met my lifetime mentor, uh, Mr. Crispin Hampson, who really was uh, instrumental in encouraging me to become an academic. Um, he identified me from uh, my B.Ed. Uh, program to say when you complete the, the program will keep you at the university so that you can be an academic. Um, and that, that's when it's all started, I mm -hmm. suppose. Um, so uh, I can say that because of the type of support that was available for me at the University of Kosovo Natal and the type of mentorship that I received, I was then able to uh, pursue my dreams and to, to be where I am today. So would you say that that is the key, really, to, for our youth now, that they get the right people to help guide, mentor at um, important points in their lives so that they can have a journey like yours? That, uh, as you said, you know, the, the, the opportunities are there, but how do you get to them? Absolutely, Peter. You know, um, one of the most frustrating things that I've witnessed is that a lot of young people... Um, do not know that the opportunities are available, but also at the same time uh, do not have anybody that they can actually speak to about uh, their dreams, about the, 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 what they hope to achieve in life. Um, often we find young people being stuck uh, um, and thinking that you know their lives are sort of uh, constrained in the township or a rural area wherever they're based and not realizing that there are multiple opportunities that are out there and that they need to go out there and get them uh, themselves. Mentorship plays a very important role in, in actually supporting young people to attain um, their uh, dreams uh, but at the same time also there has to be a sense of agency from the self to say I am actually wanting to be something in life and I'm going to try and actually find out and I'm going to go out there and find out, ask people about how to get to point B. I'll give you an example. Um, at the beginning of this year, um, I, I had a young man who wrote in uh, to me to say uh, he's from deep uh, rural Mbangeni and uh, he doesn't have any parents. His parents are, uh, he doesn't have anybody in the family who works, but he's been accepted to uh, uh, pursue his BA degree with us at the university. And he did not know how he was going to find money to come into the program because he had nobody uh, to provide uh, for him. So he looked around, started searching for in the, on the university website to look at who he can write to to mm -hmm. assist in his situation. And he, out of the blue, wrote an email to me and then was able to, we were then right, able to invite right. him to the university and then give him the type of support that he needs. So it's not just about the mentorship, it's also about uh, taking assistance. action yourself, being agentic and trying to uh, uh, realize your dreams and realizing that you have to act yourself 
and not expect somebody else to do something for you. All right. So I've, I've read a little bit about your background and some of the initiatives that you did even back in high school. And so you're about change and doing new things. What do you think needs to happen for our education system to start to uh, raise that excellence and create this new South Africa that we're, we're all desperately wanting to see? Mm. The, the biggest challenge with our education system at the moment is that it has too low expectations for our young people. So um, a lot of young people uh, go into a system that does not actually necessarily believe that they are excellent and that they can actually realize their dreams and achieve in life. Um, the type of expectations that we set are too low. And we don't actually look into how we can challenge young people to think critically and to open up their minds and pursue uh, whatever uh, innovat innovative uh, ideas that they have. Um, one of the biggest uh, challenges I've noticed, uh, in fact I noticed this when I went to university, um, is that the schooling system is based on regurgitation. You are meant to recall and, and uh, regurgitate what you've been taught by your teacher. Whereas at a university you are expected to think critically and a lot of our students struggle when they get to university because they have not been given the skills to be able to think critically. So uh, as a fundamental uh, change that is required in the, in the education system, we have to focus on quality, on standards, and actually ensuring that young people are actually expected to excel as opposed to just achieve the bare minimum. And that is why uh, I think we could actually, as a system, uh, uh, try and improve the situation. All right, Professor Tabomsi, we unfortunately we're going to have to leave it there, but uh, I look forward to a longer conversation with you sometime in the future, uh, just because I think yours is an inspiring story. Thank you so much uh, for sharing a few moments with us this morning. Okay. So Thank you so much, Peter. Professor Tabo Msibi, 34 years old. He's the youngest dean in South Africa. So great news, inspiring. And uh, I'm going to have a conversation with him again, that's for sure.